One of my quests in working in the field of complex trauma is to really help people understand some of the more subtle forms of trauma. So much of the conversation around trauma gets focused on the big T trauma stuff. Severe abuse, severe danger, severe accidents. And, and so a lot of people come along and go, well, I don't think I have trauma because I haven't had any of that big T trauma. But yet they've got lots of very subtle trauma um, and unless they become aware of it, they're not able to really start healing and growing and working on themselves the way they could or should. And so I spend a lot of time just helping people understand some of the more subtle forms of complex trauma. So we've talked about kind of the big three, which is abuse, neglect, and abandonment. And then we've talked about betrayal trauma, cultural trauma, political trauma, captivity trauma, collective trauma, generational trauma. All of those we've tried to explain and develop. What I want to do today and next time is look at some of the even more subtle forms of trauma. And you may have experienced them, you may not. That's I don't know that. But if you have, I think these talks could really turn some light bulbs on for you and really help you go, oh, that makes sense as to where my trauma comes from. Now, having said that, I just need to give up front kind of a trigger warning. This talk might really bring up a lot of painful stuff for some of you. It might be very overwhelming once the pieces start falling into place. And so just be aware of that. Make sure you have people you can talk to. So the very first one I want to focus on is what I call the unwanted baby. So for some of you, you definitely relate to this. So let me give you three causes of an unwanted baby feeling. So number one, your parents might have got pregnant by accident. And when we talk about accidental pregnancies, there's really two types. So the one is a mistimed pregnancy. So they kind of want to get pregnant, just not now. And the second is they didn't want to get pregnant at all. It was a pure accident that they're not happy about. So you can see the second one that when the parents don't want to get pregnant and, and they do, it's an accident that the child can feel very unwanted because the parents did not want that pregnancy. The mistimed pregnancy, they wanted to get pregnant, just not now. You can still see how the child could pick up some unwanted stuff. But then there's a second one, and, and that is the parents wanted a boy, not a girl. And you are a girl, uh, or the other way around. And so you just have always felt your parents wished you were a boy, you were not wanted. And then the third is, if your mother died giving birth to you, all of a sudden your life cost her her life and that makes you kind of unwanted. They'd prefer to have mother over you. So those are the kind of things that can result in a child feeling unwanted. So Hungarian psychoanalyst Sandor Ferenczi says this, these are the unwelcome guests of the family. And then he goes on to say, someone who is not fully invited into the world. They seem like visitors, outsiders, who might leave at any minute. So that's kind of that unwanted child. Now, Drexel University Women Health Blog has given some inter interesting information about unwanted pregnancies. And they said that about half of the pregnancies in the U.S. are unwanted Unplanned, unplanned or unintended. So again, they make the, the two categories of mistimed and unwanted. The risk factors for unintended pregnancies tend to be, not always, but tend to be people from a low socioeconomic status, mothers who are drug users, women who are, men who are involved, don't have as much education, women who are involved in the sex trade, or the type of contraceptive that was used, or younger women who haven't been using contraceptives properly. So those are kind of the higher risk categories. But what they're also finding, and this is where I really want us to think about, is that they followed what happens with the children who come out of unwanted pregnancies, and they're beginning to see that there's poor maternal and child outcomes, that the children born of unwanted pregnancies are at risk of behavioral and psychological issues in adolescence. In other words, somehow they get complex trauma that results then in 
mal maladaptations, behaviors in, in adolescence that begin to cause a lot of damage. So this whole unwanted pregnancy thing, the unwanted baby, has really led to a discussion. Can a, a, a baby in the womb, in utero, sense whether or not they're wanted? And there's a whole bunch of research that's now coming out about this that I find just fascinating. But just let me give you what has been written by several German researchers. And they said this, the fetal autonomic nervous system is negatively affected by maternal adverse emotional states. So there's now evidence that if the mom is not in a good emotional state, if she's going through a lot of negative emotions, it does affect the fetus. There is currently growing evidence to suggest that increased maternal stress during pregnancy can lead to adverse effects on the physiological, metabolic, and neuronal development of the fetus during gestation with possible long-lasting effects. Generally speaking, adverse maternal emotional states such as depression, anxiety, social stress, discrimination, and General prenatal distress can influence fetal and neonatal motor, cognitive, and social development. And I've just seen repeated research coming out that says that the fetus can be affected by the mother's emotional state. It senses it and it can activate the child's stress system even within the womb. Emily Guarnada has said this, babies are affected by their parents' emotional state while in the womb, but the full extent is still unknown. So we're still researching this, but we're starting to see patterns. And that can be both positive and negative. So on the positive, for example, when mothers feel joy, their bodies release oxytocin, also known as the bonding hormone. And research from 2007 suggests that the more oxytocin that is released during the first trimester, the more bonding there will be between the mother and the child after birth. So it's going to have very positive effects on the ability of the mother to bond with the child. So if the mother's wanting this child, is excited about this child, and oxytocin is released, that's going to have a very positive effect on attachment once the child is born. But then on the negative, a 2020 study noted that growing babies can be impacted by mood changes, trauma, and complications during pregnancy. So many factors have the potential to interrupt bonding with a child in utero, including anticipatory anxiety. So the mother's nervous about the baby coming or doesn't want the baby coming, financial distress, so just a lot of stress in the person's life, the mother's stressed out, that affects the child, hormonal changes, substance use, unplanned or unwanted pregnancy, and partner abandonment. So divorce, separation, or death of a partner. All of those creates a, a very negative emotional world, stressful world for the mother, which affects the baby in utero. So what are the results then beyond just in the uterus? So again, the Drexel University College of Women has said, here's what you can expect is going to happen to a child that was not wanted. So when they are finally born, there's not going to be the attachment with the parents that would have happened if they were deeply wanted, if the parents immediately wanted to connect. There's going to interrupt secure attachment. Then that's going to usually result in either neglect, because the parents just aren't, madly in love with this child, so there's going to be some neglect happening, or some abuse. The parents get frustrated easily with the child. The, the parents lash out at the child. The parents get angry a lot at the child. The parents blame the child for their problems because that child wasn't wanted. And so there's going to be neglect abuse, mild to severe, that's going to start to happen. The parents might meet the physical needs of the child, but there's going to be a chance that the parents aren't going to fully meet the emotional needs of the child because it's almost like they got a bit of resentment against this child. They didn't want this child. And so the emotional needs are not going to be met. Usually, the child then won't have parents who are going to regulate its emotions when it's upset because there's not the secure attachment. There's not the meeting of emotional needs. So the child is not going to develop the tools and ability to regulate their emotions properly. 
And that's all going to result then in how it affects the development of the brain and how it affects the development of their emotions. So bottom line is what you're seeing there is that unwanted child is now showing all the signs of complex trauma. It's affecting their brain development, it's affecting their emotional development, and then it's affecting their ability to attach, to regulate their emotions. So it's having lots of negative effects, physiology-wise, right off the bat. But let's take it further to when the child gets older. So what are going to be some of the long-lasting effects on this child who is unwanted? And many of you are going to be able to relate to this, and this is where it's going to start to get maybe painful and overwhelming for you. Often children who are unwanted, they may not have been told that, but somehow they know it. They sense it. But they also may have been told it. What they often find is they have an unconscious wish to die. If I wasn't wanted, then I really don't want to be here. Often they become quite pessimistic and skeptical about life. Life's just a negative thing for them. There's often a mistrust of others that develops early on because if I wasn't wanted, then I can't trust my parents. So if I can't trust my parents, who can I trust? Many develop suicidal fantasies. If I wasn't wanted, then how can I get out of here? Another characteristic is that they begin to have great difficulty believing they are loved. So let's say somebody comes into their life who does fully love them, but now they don't believe that person really is loving them because they've never experienced that full genuine love from their parents. So they're going, how can anybody truly love me? So it's almost like when a person heaps love on them, they can't absorb it. It's like water off a duck's back. They just can't believe that anybody would fully love them. So what you can see here is this is producing great shame, deep shame, core belief that the reason I'm not wanted is must be because I'm not good enough. I must not be lovable. I must be a loser. I must not have any value. Value It must somehow be my fault that I'm not loved. And that deep core belief of shame is to me one of the most devastating things that comes out of a child not being wanted. That leads to deep insecurities. Every relationship now, there's lots of insecurities of what are people thinking of me? Do they like this about me? Did I do it well enough? Are they going to accept me or reject me? Constant insecurities, which adds tremendous stress to their stress system, but often a deep loneliness because they're not able to receive love. They not, have never truly connected with anybody. They just feel all alone in the world. There's a haunting loneliness for them. And with that, they just feel they're never going to fit in anywhere. They'll never belong. They'll always be an outsider. They'll always be kind of unwanted, a black sheep. And so that not fitting in belonging is also a haunting feeling. That really then is a fear, a fear that they will never be wanted by anybody. Now you can see how devastating this is, how this can lead to deep depression for people. But that fear of never being wanted is just a haunting fear for them. That then leads to every time they get into a relationship, they're afraid that if people get to know me at all, they're going to reject me and abandon me. So they live now in every relationship with that constant fear of rejection and abandonment. And then because they weren't wanted, they always felt like they were a burden. They were a pain to their parents. And so now in every relationship they go into, they just have this feeling that they're a burden. They're a pain that people are doing stuff for them and loving them, not because they want to, but because they're obligated to, because they have to. But they don't enjoy it. They don't really want to do it. They long to connect with people, to finally have somebody that wants them, who wants to connect with them. But they have a deep fear of connecting because if I connect to people, they'll get to know me. And if they get to know me, then they're not going to want me because nobody else has. And so I want intimacy, but I'm afraid of intimacy. So that begins to affect every relationship. But beyond relationships, they move off into adult life and they get a job. But now they have this irrational fear that the boss is going to want to fire them 
Or they get into a relationship and they have an irrational fear that the partner, even though things are going well, wonderful, the partner is getting ready to dump them because deep down they feel they're unwanted. So no boss would really want them. No partner would really want them. Everybody's planning to get rid of them. And so they have this fear that any success, any good stuff happening to them isn't going to last. Something bad's going to happen. The other shoe is going to drop. Anything that good is happening is just too good to be true. So don't get your hopes up that life could be fulfilling and wonderful. And that results in many people who are unwanted babies sabotaging every good thing in their life. I'm, go I'm unwanted and so I'm going to get dumped eventually. So let's just get it over with. I will mess it up now. I will get other people to dump me. Or if they're in a relationship, I'll abandon you before you abandon me. I am going to get out of this relationship because I'm pretty sure you're eventually going to end it. So I'll get out and it will hurt less if I do the abandoning than if you abandon me. Then, in another direction, many end up with this deep, deep anger. It's just deep lava that's boiling down there. They have anger at self. They don't like themselves. They wish they were different because they think it's their fault that they're, they were unwanted. They're angry at the world and, and that never feeling wanted, never feeling like they fit in or belong. And then for some, they just develop an anger at God. Why would you have me born into a family that didn't want me? And that can lead for many people to a deep self-pity. They just develop this victim mentality. Poor me, my life sucks, everything's against me. And they just kind of wallow in this self-pity all the time, feeling sorry for themselves. And it's kind of their way of validating their own pain, but it just feeds off itself. Then in another direction, many people who are unwanted as a child, when they get into adult lives, they are drawn to people who are going to not want them. They are drawn to people who are going to fulfill their self-fulfilling prophecy that nobody will ever want me. So they're, without realizing how, subconsciously drawn to people who will reject them, who will not want them. And so they repeat the same message and reinforce it over and over again. Some, they go to, I need to get people to want me. So they don't naturally want me, but could I do something that will get them to want me? So some become people pleasers. If I just do whatever you want, will you then want me? So that can come out of not being wanted. Others go, if I do everything perfectly, so I'm a perfectionist then will you want me? So that's their brain solution to not being wanted. Even if they get in a relationship and the person seems to want them, they just aren't able to receive love into their soul. So if you were an unwanted child, I hope this just helps make sense out of some of your life. But I also want you to realize that you can heal from this. This is complex trauma. And, and Part of what we do all the time is really help people begin to get to that core shame and the beliefs that came out of not being wanted and begin to heal that and change that and develop a connection with yourself and with safe people. It's a long journey, but it is a possible journey.